Okay, welcome everybody to the November 2nd, 2021 meeting of the Rhinebeck Village Planning Board. The first item on the agenda is the public hearing for Anita Killian, 15 Kramer Road, for an accessory apartment, a special permit. We have a motion to open the public hearing. I'll make that motion. We have a second. I'll second say. from John. Second from John. All those in favor, roll call vote. Michael Gee. Aye. Jeff Christensen. Aye. Suzanne Holtzberg. Aye. John Clark. Aye. David Miller. Aye. Okay, do we have, um, would we like them to explain to the public what uh, the project is about? I think so, Ms. Mr. Chair. I believe the architect just just arrived. Yeah. Hello, is, 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 is our project up? Yes. Yes, okay, one second here. Okay, as you, uh, as you remember, we're proposing an addition to an existing structure, uh, a single family lot in a small sub suburban neighborhood behind the hospital and across from the fairgrounds. Um, the, the block is all detached single family homes, mostly one story. And we are proposing the same. There was an existing building there. We are keeping the foundation, the basement, and replacing everything above ground with an addition on the back. The configuration allows for an interior courtyard. Our, uh, our client has spent a lot of time in Asia and we're, we are proposing a Japanese style garden in the middle with all native plant species. Big change here. Um, well, first I corrected the lot coverage since the last meeting. We're now at 20, which is well below the max. Um, the big change here is that the health department rejected our proposal for a new septic tank in the front yard, modifying the existing system. And we are now putting a brand new septic field in the backyard, um, which, which is uh, enabled by reconfiguring the cottage footprint. So we basically turn the cottage 90 degrees and the 10 foot setback on the side. This gives us our setback to the septic field and we can put both the new field and the reserve field in the area you see hatched here. But we won't have the health department approval for some time as it's a brand new system. Um, for the most part, it's the same project, just with a different footprint. We're still proposing the deck, the garden in the center, steps down to a small bench in the back, um, and planting new trees around the property. And the cottage and the accessory cottage is a one bedroom, the tiny kitchenette, the living room facing our, our courtyard and the small bath. We are, uh, this, 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 the existing building had three baths and with the inclusion of this cottage, we are at three baths. So we're not increasing the capacity of the septic at all. And the elevations are more or less the same, um, just with a slightly different configuration. Big windows are facing the courtyard. These small windows will be facing the street and this trellis structure here, which will have an outdoor, outdoor cooking. And I believe that's it. Okay, well, um, if we have members of the public who would like to speak, you can uh, raise your hand so Ryan can see you or you can send a chat message. The chat box is in uh, the middle of the bottom of your screen. You can say, I'd like to speak. Um, or reactions are like waving a hand. You can click on that and, um, and raise your hand like that. Um, and Ryan will see you. So does anyone that would like to speak, 
Brian, I'll turn on your microphone and let you make a comment. Brian, do we have anyone who would like to speak? Um, I saw one person raise their hand, but it went away so fast I could not. Could I could not see who raised their hand. Could that person please raise their hand again? If they if they don't know how to do that, they can unmute their microphone and start their video. You click on the lower left, it says mute mic and stop stop or start video. You click on those and Brian will let you speak. Maybe if you stop, Jess, if you stop sharing your screen for a second, we could see everybody who's out there. We see the people. Does anyone like to speak? Oh, someone's trying Alice's I, iPad. Oh, uh, I wasn't really intending to speak. I'm not real familiar with my equipment, but um, I think um, it's fine with me. Whatever they want to do is fine with me. Could I just get your full name and address, please? My name is Alice Virginia Plotnik, P-L-O-T-N-I-C-K. My address is 18 Kramer, C-R-A-M-E-R -E Road, Rhinebeck 12572. Thank you, thank you, Alice. You're welcome. Thank you, Alice. We, uh... Any other neighbor or anybody in the village make like to make a comment about this? Okay. Um, do we have a motion to uh, to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion to close the public hearing. Okay. Michael Gee makes the motion. Do we have a second? Second, John. John Clark makes the second. Okay. A roll call vote. Michael Gee. Aye. Jeff Christensen. Aye. Suzanne Holtzberg? Aye. John Clark? Aye. David Miller? Aye. Okay, okay. now the site plan. So you, you realize that you didn't need the uh, asphalt to be counted in the uh, calculation. Yes, I took it out. So you're well under the limit there. So yep. where are we with the Board of Health in terms of moving forward on the project? They agree that we should put it in the back and our engineer has, has uh, done his calculations and says that it can fit and is now working with the Board of Health to get it approved. So we're asking for conditional approval, obviously based on Board of Health approval for the septic. Are you losing any uh, like tree screening or anything else back there that would be of consequence? Do you need to no, there's still, back there? We have a 20 foot setback from the building. So there's still plenty of room for tree plantings. What about, is there a privacy fence around the back? I can't remember. Uh, there is a fence. It's not a privacy fence, but I, I don't think it's a sensitive property in back of that. I believe it's a commercial property, actually. Yeah. It backs up to that school, right? Correct. Yeah. And there is existing trees. There's a line of existing trees on that back lot line. Okay. Any one of the board members have a comment? Uh, we've been over several times. Yeah, I, I, um, I think they settled everything except the septic at the last meeting. So, um, in terms of, you know, it seems to comply otherwise. Right, well, does someone like to make a motion with the conditional, uh, that condition that we get approval from the Board of Health? Obviously, they can't get a C of O and move in until they get the Board of Health approval. So, sort of have a check there. And we've done things like this before. But would there someone like to make a motion with the condition of Board of Health approval prior to occupancy? I'll make the motion, John. Well, I'll second that, Jeff. Okay, a roll call vote, Michael D. Aye. Jeff Christensen. Aye. Suzanne Holtzberg. Aye. John Clark. Aye. David Miller. Aye. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, the next item on the agenda is unlimited tomorrow, but they are not ready yet. So they're postponing to the next meeting. So we're gonna hold that agenda item over. And uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Petro, Petropopoulos, um, 30 Livingston Street, the uh, proposed uh, pool is also uh, not quite ready. They're having some technical difficulties with the design and they will be back. So the next item on your business is um, Loopy Mango Wool Store at 71 East Market Street, Suite Number 5, a sign application. Are they here? They are. Uh, yes, I'm Loopy Mango. Okay. Um, what is your actual name, please? <laughs> oh, my name is Anna. Sorry, <laughs> Anna. Anna. Anna, what's your last name, please? Um, it's um, it's Pulvermacher. P U L V E R M A K H E R. Thank you. So this was an art gallery, and now it's a uh, um, a wool store. I guess they're both retail businesses. Correct. And do we have the sign calculations for it, Ryan? Does it does it fit? Yes. Just give me a minute. Okay. And of course, it's a round sign that always gets it, uh, us into a little trouble doing the calculation of the square footage. Um, but uh, the 30 inch circle, white on black, or is that just? Uh... Um, it, yes, it's white on black. Can you bring back the calculations page? Right, yes, okay. So the art gallery, which was the art gallery, and then it moved next door to the, big, the bigger uh, space. It was our resident mathematician I'll be calculating away um, at 30, the diameter of 30 inches yields how many square feet? So that is the only sign that will be hanging at that big picture in the window of, of, of wool. Is there a sign on the door? 30 inch diameter looks to be 4.9 square feet. Is that what the um, application says, Ryan? Uh, you having a sign on the door? Or uh, uh, that's just uh, temporary. I mean, I, until we um, have the sign that so. And actually, I think yeah. So um, it's, you know, it's, if we get an approval, we'll take the sign out from the door. So you're just going to have the 30-inch circular black and white sign hanging from the porch. And nothing yeah. in the door, and nothing in the window, except you can have wool in the window. Well, yeah, I mean, we'll have store hours on the door. That that, that doesn't count. That's okay. Yeah. Anybody have any comments about the sign? Uh, I guess we are concerned with light. Is there lighting? No, there's no lighting. It's just uh, like a piece of metal with, um, you know, in black color with white letters. And that sign is low. It's lower than seven feet. It appears to be uh, up against the column. We're always, and on, uh, and on steps, we're always concerned about low signs and someone getting injured. But, uh, well, um, 
I mean, the photo right now, I mean, it's a mock-up. We were planning to attach it in the same place where the art gallery sign, the sign was attached in exactly the same place. Um, and their sign was, I think, like bigger, or I mean, it was wider. So it'll be hanging in this spot? Um, yes, in that spot, but I mean, we can put it higher. Um, like I, I found uh, where the old sign was attached. So we were going to just like use exactly um, same place where the gallery, where their prior sign was attached. It would look like with the column there and the two steps in the way that nobody could really walk under it. Everybody well, I know. I mean, it's on the side so they can um, go up the stairs. Right, and they, they, won't, they won't walk into the sign. No, they won't walk into the sign. I think maybe in the photo, it's just a little bit hard to see. I mean, the sign will be perpendicular to the building, so. You can see it from both directions. Yeah. They want to want out. every every business to be successful, and this location has been. I'd seen a lot of turnover because it's on the other side of the parking lot, so a lot of commercial customers don't walk by it. So. You know, I think it's a great fine sign, but to me, I wouldn't know that it's a wool store. I, you know, other than maybe if you could interpret the sheet. So, if you have extra sign square footage, you might think about putting something in the window or the door that says, you know, fine wool products or something okay. that would identify door to people okay. who don't know what it is as a new business. But that's just advice. I think the sign is as you laid it out is fine. I'm, I'm pretty sure being that Village Hall is so close, I think in the display window, there are um, collections of, of yarn on them. I'm not mistaken. In yeah, that one, yeah. That, um, uh, I mean, display that window. photo was taken a couple of weeks ago. Right now, um, we, you know, in the window, they can see that there is wool in, inside. So we have like a table inside and it has wool, like balls of yarn and okay. you know, DIY kits. So, all right. In the future, you're only allowed to have 50% of the glass area of the window with any temporary type paper signs. So, you know, we want to have open storefronts, but I understand that that was before you got the permanent sign up. Oh, yeah. I mean, and that... Uh, it's gone now, right, one, Anna? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, well, the it's big one in the window, now. that's gone. That was just... Uh, during the ship and wool so people know there's something is going to be there but right now there's nothing in the window uh in that big window i mean there's like a small hiring sign and but like that big sign with the girl holding yarn that one we took it down okay hey, does, any, does anyone if no one else has any objection would someone like to make a motion to approve the sign for loopy mango I'll make a motion to approve the sign, Suzanne Holzberg. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Michael Gee seconds it. Uh, roll call vote, Michael Gee. Aye. Okay. Uh, Jeff Christensen. Aye. Suzanne Holzberg. Aye. John Clark. Aye. David Miller, aye. Well, good luck. We hope you're successful. We hope all of our businesses business are successful. We don't want bacon to go to the business district. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. I can't uh, believe this, but the last item on the discussion is Lydia and Michael Slaby 25 Mulberry Street. Are we really here? We really are here. We've gotten Board of Health approval. We've gotten That's our variances awesome. approved. We're not late because the entire agenda fell apart. <laughs> this, is, this is like a miracle for everyone involved. <laughs> Michael's phoning in from Southern Virginia, so that's why he looks she, like he looks she like banished him. She banished me to the Winnebago until we get the plans approved. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you got the variances, you got the Board of Health approval, you see, you know, the plans, um, I, got a, I got a copy of the big plans and I was looking them over today. They look pretty good. 
we don't see, uh, Ryan pointed out that we don't see any landscaping on there. We don't see any lighting on them. Oh, we do have that. Shoot. I thought we did. Um, okay. Do you want me to zoom in here? Or do you want to see, what, 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 what would you like me to do? Well, do, do you have a lighting plan so we can see what that would look like? Do you have landscaping plans? And Michael, he had a question too. Um, okay. The, I, I need to find the lighting plan from Mark. Um, Michael, you, what's your question? Um, my condition for approval for demolition was predicated upon um, saving the brackets on the back part of the house if you could use them again or reconstructing them to the same dimensions and looking at the new plans that I saw the other day, there's no visualization from your architect on the uh, Italian eight brackets. They've just disappeared. So we were plan, I, I know that we were planning on reusing them on the port cochere and on the barn. Um, we're not planning on using them on the rear edition because the rear edition is a slightly um, less ornate uh, architectural design. And we did that on purpose to show that it's new. But that wasn't what you said when we were having the discussion of the demolition. I was, you know, I'm not a big fan of taking historic structures down but if you can make a case to, you know, recreate in kind, that was what I was led to believe. So that seems to be a different. Oh, we, we okay. haven't demolished the back of the house. Yeah, that's not. Right. The... Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you wanted. Um, can I just do a quick screen screen share um, screen Go share right ahead, Lydia. OK, thanks. Somewhere. Okay. So can you see this? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is the south side of the house um, of the proposed uh, work. This is this here is is the front half of the house with all of its detailed hinges and columns and all the rest of it. And this is the same design that we've had for months where the back half doesn't have those. And, you know, we did this on, as I mentioned, we did this on purpose so that it's clear that this is the new, that this is the old part of the house and that this is, you know, complementary but not from 1883. Um, this, what we were planning on doing was reusing those brackets from the back porch um, here on the port cocher so that, you know, the look of the front half of the house continues and it continues with the original materials. Um, and also, sorry. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, well, that's not helpful because now, oh. And also here on the barn, yeah, Lydia, um, we're still looking at the south elevation on your share. Oh, you are? Okay, all right. I will reshare. Oh, I thought I'd figured out a way to switch documents while still sharing, but okay. Um, so here on the barn, we thought we would we would reuse it, them here and then um, and then um once again here um on the porco share so i mean if you'd rather that we had the back half of the house you know if, if you'd rather we sort of you know use the old ones and fabricated new ones so that the back half of the house you know has the same ornate appearance, um, then, then, you know, we can certainly discuss that. Sure. Um, 
I think our main concern is the view from the street. So it looks. Right. I, I know that, that you're making a point that is a big debate. I attended a seminar a couple of years ago about adding on to a historic structure. And do you make it look exactly like the historic structure? So uh, like it's always been there or do you make it look completely new? So it's clear to everybody that it's not part of the historic structure but it's a new addition. And that's a 50-50 debate among architects around the country. Um, which one you should know. <laughs> Well, I'm really glad that we just jumped right into the middle of that. Um, yes, <laughs> because it's, it's, it's well, there is a middle middle ground in which you make it look compatible and not contrasting. You know, the old theory of architecture was that you make it uh, contrasting so that they would know it's a modern element and not some sort of uh, watered down version. But I think the more consensus argument at this point is that you make it look complementary. But still, significant enough difference that it's not. Uh, That's looks kind like of where we land. That's sort of where we landed: is compatible, complementary, but distinct. Yes, and I, I perfectly agree that I think the Port Crescent, because it's visible from the street, and particularly would be a better place to use the brackets than on the back of the house if you have surplus brackets. So that way, from the front, it looks like a complementary piece. Uh, most people are never going to see the back of the house. But I don't know how many brackets, I don't remember how many brackets you have and whether you have enough to do both or... Um, we, cer we certainly have enough to do the port cochere and the barn. Um, I don't know if we have enough to do the port cochere and the back of the house. Um, you know, obviously we could fabricate new ones, but that... You know, I don't know if that defeats the purpose of the uh, operation. I think you're you're you know making the second bay window look like the first bay window, but not have them is the point that John just made, and that you guys were talking about to make sure right. it's a little different. Um, right. You don't need to fool anybody. How's Michael feel about that? Well, I, I can I, I I've heard the arguments and. I, I can live with it. I just remember it kind of brought me back to when we did Buddy Rogers house, they had really nice crown molding. Oh, yeah. And I said, I want that put back and they, oh yeah, yeah. And then it disappeared. And then when they got brought back in, then they put up this dinky little thing to satisfy us, but it's not the same. Um, but you know, I'm fine with it. I think our main concern always is the view from the street. Um, so there is some stuff on here. It says uh, Norway maple, sugar maple, rhododendron, hostas, ferns, proposed rain garden, proposed Japanese junipers. I remember seeing a landscaping plan. Is that? Uh, You're looking at the sheet that's uh, that's uh, plan 10-21-21 clean version. It says. Uh, yeah. This one here? She, yeah. One or two. Yeah, that one. Oh. And you can see wow. below there, um, it talks about various gardens. Again, the gardens in the back are not as much as a concern as the, as the landscaping out front. You're not taking down any major trees in the front or anything, right? No, only the ones that die, which we had to go this spring. <laughs> But um, no, we are not planning any anything like that in the front. There's um, the, the the previous owners loved trees, and they also loved planting them really close together when they were young. Um, so that is a uh, horticultural problem that I am grappling with at the moment. Um, but you know, nothing that'll make it look you know, like a barren desert or anything like that. Not at all. Um, and we are currently working on, there's a small hill, uh, a change in elevation. Um, Megan Marks or Bone are at a higher elevation than we are down here. And so we're currently planting um, sort of screening and, and, and in order to maintain that hill. 
and also to give us privacy from them because they have a pool right here. We have a pool right here. So it's all a little bit much. Um, Peter and Jerry next door um, were also planting sort of a, a tri-story garden over here. Obviously the maples were the top story. And then we have a variety of Japanese maples and magnolias and um, those beautiful trees that bloom in the spring and they're white and sometimes they're pink. Um, and then and then on the bottom level, azaleas, rhododendrons, and all the rest of it. So, so this 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 is a growing uh, fence between us. Um, and then obviously some evergreens too for some, especially evergreens right here on the side of the port cochere, so that um, you know there there's year round screening there. Um, so I'm working with our neighbors on that, and everybody seems, you know, delighted. So. And your front, you don't have much of a front yard. It's a very deep property, but not a wide property. And a lot of it nope. is driveway. So yeah, right. We have we have a huge um, maple. We have a huge sugar maple right here. And then um, a series of sort of screenings down here. Um, there's a cypress. There's a weeping something. There's um, something else here. And then there's about four or five trees that march along here as well as with some mature um, hydrangeas, hydrangea trees back here. Um, and then the garden here is, is generally open. There's a weeping red bud right here. Um, and then there's a, a hedge of mature yews in, right in front of the porch that we're in the process of trying to shorten a little bit. But as you know, it takes years to do that. Are there any any additional lighting going on there to uh um in the front of the house no um in the rear the only lighting we have is um hold on lydia are we sconces on the front door on either side of the front door oh yeah we did want to do that all right hold on let me stop let me do this <laughs> sorry sorry this is why husband is here. Um, okay. Um, as, as you know, we had talked about, so the only main difference here is obviously the view of the Porco Cher, but there's also turning the single door with the side pane of windows into a double door um, and keeping the original transom window. Um, we have talked about there's a very bright borderline garish um, hanging pendant light here. We've actually talked about replacing it with two sconces, much much softer sconces on either side of the door. Um, we had a long conversation about having them be gas powered. We decided against it. Um, it's not on the drawing, so that's disappointing. Um, and then the back lighting is just, sorry, I'm gonna find this now. Um, um, goose, gooseneck lights um, that face down and don't splatter light um, over the garage door. And then um, two lights underneath the, um, the breezeway so inside here over the doors but not but they're inside they're not outside um and there is a lighting ryan did did that lighting plan not make it um, i don't think so okay this is an example of the lighting but it's also it's not great um because we couldn't find one that actually we really like the look of um, that also had all of the requirements needed for for you all. Um, so, you know, this isn't great, but um, it'll definitely be something like this, just a gooseneck over um, and no more than 13 watts over the garage door. I mean, I don't like this one. It is not historic. It doesn't look attractive, um, but 
Mark Grominski told me that I needed to show you something that had, you know, the amount of light that it spat out. Um, so this is where we are. <laughs> Then the fence around the pool is going to be cast iron. Anyone have comments on the plans? Well, there's a lighting section in the code that just makes sure that the, all the light is focused downward and shielded from any light spill onto your neighbors. Yes, we are. We are. We are. We we will make sure of that. Um, uh, I'll, the, I'll... the only other comment I have is, can you scan to the uh, left there so I can see the driveway? Yes. Right now you have pavers and here it says limits of existing gravel drive. Are you switching your driveway around? No. Um, oh. That was a miscommunication with the, um, with the engineer. Um, we're basically leaving this as is. Um, what we may do is swap out the red pavers for um, ones that are the same color as bluestone. Um, but you know, we're going to keep the pavers and then pass the port cochere. That's when it'll convert into um, a gravel just track back here until we get to the gravel in front of the garage. So Lydia, just re uh, remind me, do those pavers go from sort of your driveway straight out to Mulberry Street? Yes, with like a little, with like a little. Okay, so connector. when you guys change the driveway and the pavers, you definitely will have to continue the sidewalk? Yeah. So yeah. either right now, unless the planning board gives you a conditional approval or, or condition of the approval is either going to have to be bluestone or concrete. So I don't know if you want to keep in continuity with your neighbors and have the bluestone or if you want to do the concrete or if you had something else in mind, you'd have to get um, conditional approval from the board. What's there now? It says slate. Is that blue stone? No, it's it's uh, reddish pavers that go right yeah. to Mulberry Street. There's no sidewalk, but it is a paved surface over the where the sidewalk is. Yeah, there's the the pavers continue down to this line, and then this is asphalt um, because they 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 when they repaved Mulberry Street, they made Mulberry Street narrower, and so suddenly we we now have an asphalt little. It's your a, it's your a, it's your apron. That's what it's. Yes, thank you, thank you, Ryan. We, yep. we now have an asphalt apron, courtesy of the village. Um, so oh, okay. So if we do change these pavers from the red ones to anything else, we have to make sure that the sidewalk itself is either concrete or bluestone. Yes, we like yes, to as continuous. Okay, all right. If if you want to leave it alone, you can leave it alone. But um, uh, but if you're going to change it, then then the sidewalk should link up with the other um, pieces of okay. sidewalk. Okay. We like the look of um, that the 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 recent renovation on Chestnut Street. Um, uh, with the big garage to the right of the house. Um, what they did is they have bluestone, but they they set the bluestone in concrete for their um, driveway. Yeah, which right. you can put the boost on on dirt, but when you get to the, the car part, you've got to have yeah, it's got to be a little bit more secure. So no crack, right? So I don't know. We'll and see. I don't. The driveway is not supposed to be any more than eighteen feet wide. Now, the one on Chestnut is too wide, but uh, it sort of slipped by whoever. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was us or the uh, inspector, but um, you know, we we like to you Noted. know. Narrow driveways at the throat, they could widen up when they get further on. Yep. So um, they have a heavy driveway frontage in front of the house. So, well, this will actually, I mean, just given we're, you know, just given this, we might narrow it up a little bit just along the house, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah. yeah it doesn't look like it, probably less than 18 feet anyway, because the only yeah. dimension on there is 22 and it's, it's for a longer piece. So, 
Yeah. Oh yeah, it's definitely not wider than 18 feet. Okay. Well, I guess things look pretty good to me. Any, any other comments from the board? No comments? Um, I think it's I'm a nice- satisfied. Um, uh, I'm, I'm happy, I think it's nice. I think the only condition I would add is that all the lighting is downward focused, doesn't reflect on the neighbor's property or the up into the night sky. So that whatever fixtures they decide on are compliant with that condition. Well, I, I, I never uh, thought I would ever get to say this, but <laughs> can I, have, can I have a motion to approve the site plan for twenty twenty four, subject to the the, uh, the lighting comments that John just made. And if and if the lighting just says so you know if the lighting's under six hundred lumens which is normally what a porch light is, 40 watts usually. Um, it doesn't have to be downward focused. You, you know, you can have like a low watt porch light. Um, that's not a problem, but if there's any of the gooseneck or any of those things, they should be focused downwards, anything that's sort of not underneath the house. Okay. Or, or it has a more than a 40 watt bulb in it. Okay. I think it's 40 watt, isn't it? 600 lumens. Yeah. Whatever 600 lumens is. 600 you know, lumens. Watt. So my, I, I have lanterns and they're four watt bulbs in there, but it, they're bright. So I, I don't know what, what <laughs> you don't, you don't need much in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> and the LED lighting is a whole different ballgame. Yeah. So would I'm someone like to put that in a motion that uh, to approve the site plan as proposed with that one condition about lighting being downward focused and no light trespass or glare onto the neighbor's property. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second that, Jeff. Jeff second. Okay, roll call vote. Jeff Christensen. Aye. Su Suzanne Holtzberg. Aye. John Clark. Aye. Michael Gee. Aye. David Miller. Aye. Well, go, go and build, like Lydia builds her dream house. They made a movie about that. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap. <laughs> that he did. <laughs> Thank you all so much, and I appreciate your patience during this entire process. That Ooh. was quick. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I, I never thought we'd get to there. Um, so we have a discussion item, um, which Warren is here for somewhere. He is. There he is. About uh, 46 Livingston Street. Renovating the Mulberry Side Garage, which is a okay. Uh, Ryan, are you able to put up what I sent you, or do I need to share my screen? Well, I can share the screen, Warren. Just give me a second to uh, get into uh, the file for sure. Yep, forty-six. So forty-six is the Second Empire House with a tower. Um, sort of diagonally across from Lydia and Michael's house, except theirs isn't on the corner, but it's close. Um, so it's on the southwest corner of um, Mulberry and Livingston. It's kind of a blue gray now with white trim, but it's it's the tower that it's most um, note for, noted for. It's one of um, the few iconic Second Empire, you know, um, French style houses in the village, the Parisi house um, on the hill next to Star Library being the second. And then there's another, there are a couple of others with that look, um, including a kind of a sweet one story one with a mansard right on South Street, just down from uh, Jeff and Linda Christensen's house. But in any event, um, this house is um, one of the most photographed in the village. And the, the carriage house um, around the corner from it that faces on to um, Mulberry, almost across from David Miller. Um, it, the evidence suggests that it might have been built a little earlier because it looks like it might have originally been a, a gable shaped building with just triangular gable um, running um, east west. And then at some point um, it was renovated to sort of match the house. Um, you, you can tell by looking at it from the street that the, one of the garage, the garage doors were changed and various other things were, were changed. But nonetheless, um, it is a very um, significant surviving carriage house 
um, in the village of Rhinebeck that was um, heavily reworked to match the adjacent house, which was built, I think, about 1885 or so. So the, 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 the carriage house has not benefited from um, the, all the work that's been done to the house over the few years, including um, you know, complete insulation, replacing of siding, repair of roofing. And the, um, the side that's up against the, the former uh, doctor's office immediately to its south of the block, a white painted concrete block building right next to it, it has had a lot of deterioration. It's the south side, um, there's a hole in the roof, um, it's, it's, it, you can walk through there, but it's, it's tight. Um, but both the roof and the wall has deteriorated substantially. Um, and so while it's been, it was painted the last time uh, Colton and Gene Johnson painted the house before they sold it, um, it, it hasn't had any work done recently. Owners would like to, um, to save it, uh, repair it. Um, but needless to say, there's a significant investment required for this. Um, the slate roof, uh, which we, we'd like to, to salvage and, and replace with slate, where that's, we keep as much as possible, replace with matching slate where possible. Um, we've also looked at, at um, simulated slate, which really is not much less defensive than the real slate. Um, and if we can get the real thing, that, that's the choice. But, but um, there's quite a bit of structural work that needs to be done. On the second floor, there are two diagonal braces that might have been added sometime after the mansard was put on there to try to uh, keep it from sagging at the midpoint of the long walls. But the one on the south side snapped quite some time ago, so it's really not providing any bracing. And so that's one reason why that whole wall, that the roof has sagged inward, the wall has bowed out. Um, and again, the, the structure is kind of standing together by habit on that side. So our, our first goal with the, with the building um, was to look at how we could stabilize it um, and, and get it back to, um, to its original shape so we could repair it, replace the roof and so forth. Um, and to that end, um, I had uh, Marty Rosenblum and Matt Alexander, who was in charge of restoration and repairs up at um, the, uh, the, I'm sorry, the house in Catskill, the Cole House, Thomas Cole House in Catskill, after a lot of work at Bard College, um, walk through the building with me a couple of times and discuss um, appropriate options for, for stabilizing this building um, while you know, minimally uh, intruding on the historic character. And so we came up with a system of, of additional taking the, the concept of the, of the diagonal brace, which is good in principle to support the upper ridge on this um, and, and doing a series of them along the uh, south wall to stiffen that wall because that's the, the one that deteriorated the most to allow us to repair it. Um, but anyway, that just kind of a general introduction. Um, so the first, the first goal is to, to stabilize and, and, and repair the exterior and, and get the building watertight. Um, but to do that, as you say, is a significant investment. And the, price, the prices for the roofing alone have been maybe 150000 and up. Wow. Um, but then there's, there's the other work that needs to be done, structural work. So in order to make this viable, the owners, Shadeen and Mark Israels, have looked into um, New York State Historic Preservation Tax Credits um, because they're designed for projects like this. And, and they were told by the state that, um, that actually if, if they could use this for a commercial use, um, and I'll describe that in a minute, um, there's more money available and it might make sense. Um, commercial use in this case would simply mean a rental apartment upstairs. Um, and so, and so um, there's a second set of drawings that I provided you. This is the as built, there were the existing conditions, I should say. Um, and you can see there are the, the stables, stalls in the back, and the, what was the carriage house uh, facing Mulberry Street, and then a, a cross aisle with a very steep stair that goes now, right now from the, the ground floor to the, the second floor. The thought is to um, keep all the exterior openings as they are, to use um, one of the stable doors to enter um, to a, a little foyer that would take a stair up to the apartment, um, and then to keep the downstairs, the rest of the downstairs as storage um, and, and potentially garage space for the owners. Um, but that that would allow us to, to allow the owners to apply for a um, a commercial tax credit simply because they would have a rental apartment upstairs. So that that's kind of the. Uh, the, the, the thinking here, and I wanted to just discuss it with the planning board. I, I know, you know, apart, accessory apartments are encouraged in the code, but there are conditions um, and, and concerns with all of them. Um, I had put together a little zoning analysis that I shared with um, Ken McLaughlin and Ryan last week, and I don't know if that was provided to you as well on the board. Um, but I, I went through they're the obvious things, like all of these outbuildings and in historic uh, lots in the village. It sits right on the property line. 
um, in, in two cases, you know, uh, on the street as well as on the on the south property line. Um, so right there, it doesn't comply with the minimum setbacks that are required in the code of 10 feet. Um, and then, of course, um, the, the size of the building, it's an existing structure. So the size is the size. Um, interestingly, when we go through the requirements for accessory apartments, as you know, there's a minimum and maximum size, but there's also the sort of 25% of principal dwelling. Well, this is a fairly large principal dwelling for Rhinebeck. Um, so actually, we're, we're pretty close to that 25%, um, but we're larger than the 750 square foot maximum. So we would need a variance for the size of the apartment simply based on the size of the second floor of the building. The other choice, of course, is to wall off parts of it, which is certainly feasible, but not a really very practical way of, of treating space. Um, it, it, I mean, you know, like, every, like everything else, codes are established um, with certain general principles in mind, um, and, um, and, th and there are standards which are appropriate, but at the same time, we always have to look at the particular circumstances of each if each application in each building, um, and given that um, that the intent in the code, one of the intents of the code is to maintain uh, carriage houses and barns and other things, contributing structures, conversion to active allowable uses, such as an apartment, should be encouraged, including consideration of any reasonable area variances. So it's up to you um, to decide whether either these are reasonable area variances and, and whether it goes to the zoning board with a recommendation from you, um, or whether the planning board has any power in this case to, to waive conditions and, and you'll tell me that. But that's basically the outline of the plan. Um, this is not a formal application yet, but based on feedback from you, we can put together a, a formal application so we can uh, move this forward. Oh, this, yeah, this, this a building and of course the garage are listed as critically important structures to the village. Right. And um, we have, we did something on Oak Street a year or two ago, which had greater numbers than this in terms of the variance for the size. And you only, you only miss it on one, not the uh, size of the percentage of the house because the house is a gigantic house. Right. You're only missing it in terms of the 750. Right. Anything like and, this. And the, uh, you also have a front and side uh, setback variance, I would imagine. If, if you're not touching the building in terms of moving it or demolishing it, haven't we said that was existing in the past? Uh, it is an existing non-conforming building because of the setbacks. But if you're intensifying the uses, I think according to the code, you would have still have to get a variance. Um, but I would support it. And because it's an existing non-conforming building, I think you would have a very good case. You can't ask them to move the building and the second floor is... Um, it makes sense to make it something that's viable uh, to help the restoration of the building. And that sentence in the code, I was the one who proposed that sentence because I really <laughs> don't want to see carriage houses lost because they're set too close to the property line or because they, uh, you know, don't have a viable use or whatever. You know, we're losing too many of the bards and the carriage houses in the village, I think, uh, through neglect. And this is a way of making that... Um, look as nice as the house looks right now. Is, so, uh, yeah. I would support it. And I think you I think, you know, you could go to the building inspector and get a ruling on the area variances. Um, but I think you have a good case. And I would I would uh, support a positive recommendation myself. Yeah, I, we'd have to consult the zoning enforcement officer and or our zoning attorney. Mm -hmm. But if we did have the power to make this determination, since I think I I mean, the other board members can comment, but we certainly want to preserve as many of these buildings as we can and, and uh, uh, waterproofing it, fixing the roof and stabilizing the building is a fabulous project. And um, uh, we certainly want uh, apartments as well. Um, and how does the other board members feel about this? I, I would say I, I would be in favor of this proposal at this point and the economic output that they have to do to, to basically get that building back. You know, I, I, it's like they're willing to do it. I think we need to kind of help and, and get that along because I remember when Michael Bird had his, his, uh, his carriage house and we went and looked at it and it was like it had been left you know, to deteriorate for too long. And it was like, it was, it was unsafe. And you could just kind of see where this is 
if we don't let them do this, you know, we could lose it. So I would be in favor of it. Uh, Jeff, Suzanne? I agree. I think it's a great idea. Um, certainly like to see more apartments in the village anyway, and it's like a good use and uh, preserving the building is obviously desirable. I, I agree. Uh, this is, uh, this is, this is, well, it's, it's, it's tired looking, but it is one of the more beautiful carriage houses in the village. There aren't that many left. There are, uh, if if these if these owners are willing, as you said, to put in the economic thing, I I think it's a it's a terrific thing. Um, I agree with uh, John Clark. Uh, you know, we may have to suggest a uh, setback variance, but I cannot imagine that would be a problem. And in fact, neither do I think it's a problem to allow the eleven hundred uh, and eight square foot, which would be in excess of the seven fifty max on an ADU. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for us to save a terrific piece of history in this, uh, in this village. I, I support it. So Ryan, I'd like to get an opinion from Ken and perhaps from uh, our, our uh, attorney um, to see what, what they think if we do have to go through the code. The code is asking for this. We're asking for this. Do we have to go through the formality? If we do, it's fine. We can make a recommendation to the to zoning board of appeals. But uh, one, the side yard, you know, the uh, the variances. We're not touching the building. We're not moving it. Um, I don't know if we're intensifying the use. It was a garage. Now it's a um, going to be an apartment. I don't know. I'd like I'd like Ken to weigh in on this, and I'd like. And turn it away on us and see if we have the power to make this determination or if we have to go for an official variance for the uh, square footage of the building itself. Sure, Chair. I can definitely uh, re refer this both to legal and uh, Ken uh, both to weigh in. Um, Warren, we're probably going to have to have an additional discussion about escrow. Sure. Um, so we don't have to go searching um, for funds uh, for the legal uh, referrals and responses. Um, I'm just thinking time-wise and making sure um, uh, potentially if we can um, get you back in front of Ken this Thursday uh, possibly um, on the early part of his office hours just to um, try to re revisit what the board has discussed tonight concerning the different um, side and rear yard variances. So he's clear on what he needs to address and provide to the board, but um, we can sort of transfer that um, to an email back and forth, an email communication. Okay, but Thursday's fine with me. Mm -hmm. December's another one of those weird months. Right. Where the third Thursday is the 16th before our meeting on the 21st, which we were debating having or not because it's so close to Christmas. So if we wanted to get them before the CBA on the 16th, we have to have a presentation um, in two weeks or on what is it, uh, this December 7th. Uh, so Ryan would have enough time to make a notification. Otherwise it's gonna to have to wait till January. So why don't we see how it goes with um, Ken. And obviously too, we don't have to rush this because um, there's going to be an additional public hearing with you guys um, for the accessory right. dwelling unit. So, um, we would have that suggest that we don't need the legal review unless necessary. Right. He's running up the bill, you know, if the right. zoning enforcement officer feels confident one way or the other, let it go at that and they'll bring in legal unless he asks for it. Right. If the board is comfortable with that, we can go that route. I, I, I think we trust Ken. 
to uh, be able to advise uh, us and Warren what to do. But uh, certainly I'd like to, I don't know how long it takes to get this project underway, but you should try to not have to go through another winter with snow on that roof. <laughs> they they have put, they have had a tarp put over that area that's fairly secure, but it's only good for so long, obviously. So. I think one of the other things, Warren, too, that we chatted about in your first meeting with um, Ken was the parking layout, because um, currently the concept was to park, uh, create parking where the owners park. And I know um, that was possibly, you know, an item for discussion. So um, next time. Um, if that can be delineated a little bit more, because um, we we had when it was a bed and breakfast supposedly to put in a large parking area behind the uh, uh, carriage house, and they took that away to put a garden back, and so we need to make sure there's enough spots in that gravel parking area, or there are spots in the garage. There's three right. spots in the garage, yeah. Mm -hmm. we have, we yeah, have. and there are three spots in the gravel parking area, and and theoretically the house needs two, and the apartment needs one. But obviously, this can we can continue to discuss what the board would like to see there. I mean, what about the garage doors? Can they be saved? Are you, what are your plans for that? Well, the garage doors have to be repaired. Um, if you look at them closely, the one on the left is a little different from the others. And I think it's. It, I would suppose that originally there was there was a carriage house door under the upper door and maybe another one off to the side. But um, but but as it is now, again, they're, they're slightly narrower and, and a little bit different on the left. But the intent would certainly be to, to make them all repaired and functional. But they but they slide side to side. They don't. No, I think they, they raise. They, they swing. They swing. Yeah. Yeah, they're not bypass doors. You have to manually open and close them. You, right. Garage door opener. All right. All right well, um, Warren, as uh, as as this project goes forward, you'll also include uh, septic considerations yes, for the addition. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. All right. Anybody have any other questions? Um, is is it possible that he can go ahead with repairs before the winter, even if? Uh, even if um, the accessory apartment problem takes a little longer, it seems to me just for stabilization, you should be able to do whatever you want as soon as you I, want. I, yeah, I would think some some of the work inside could be done. Um, the roofing itself would wait till spring, but right. but any any interior work to to structurally support it and get it ready for roofing could we, we would just have to file a building permit for that. But that was yeah. the purpose of the repair and stabilization drawings we prepared anyway. Yeah, the only complication might be if you go into tax credit, you might want to um, get all the approvals before you do any work right. so you can charge right. it. And, and that's another point. Thank you, John. Um, everything we do uh, that, that we're going to try to apply for a tax credit for has got to be reviewed by the State Historic Preservation Office. In addition to the drawings, I've got to fill out um, sheets that detail each aspect of the historic structure, the windows, um, the, the details at the cornice, um, you know, the, the actual slate shingles and so forth. And um, shipo has got to review it and sign off on that. So there's, yeah. there's a process involved there too. It's just the owners are a little reluctant to embark on all that unless they think that they're going to get their approval. So yeah, it's always it's better to ask forgiveness than ask for approval. It doesn't work that way. It won't right. give you the money afterwards. Right. You have That's to right. have the state involved, <laughs> right. approve, right. sign right. off on it. To get your money after it's done, so it doesn't work the other way. That's right. But this is a great project, Warren. It really is very, very important to the historic integrity of the village. So we we um, applaud the owners for doing this. So we'll look forward to hearing what Ken has to say. I guess uh, Ryan can email us with his determination, and then we can move forward from there. But. Um, Site, a site, a, a official site plan submission mm -hmm. as possible. Yes. We'll take it from there. Good work. It looks great. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we will see you tentatively on November 16th, Warren. Sure. You'll just give me a time. Yes.
Is it going to be blue? <laughs> going to paint it? I imagine eventually it'll match the house, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, thank you, Warren. Complimentary well, color might be better than a matching color. Be yeah, you're opinion. right, complimentary. I agree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that San Francisco uh, blue, <laughs> that I don't think anybody ever appreciated. But we don't regulate paint colors. Or right. We got it's years better ago. than the brown that was on there before. That was yeah. a dreary, I know. <laughs> All right. We don't have any minutes yet, right, Ryan? Um, no, we don't. Right. Um, I wanted to have a little comment, but I, I, uh, I was reading the rules, and uh, I don't think we have a justification for ending the meeting and stop the recording and going to executive session to discuss a couple of things that the things I wanted to talk about are not. I don't think they're justified. Uh, in the code, New York State code for a reason for a, um, I want to talk a little bit about the Brogan Center concept, but I'll have to wait on that. By the way, someone did ring my bell at three o'clock today and said, hi, we're having a, a, a public meeting on uh, reuse of the Brogan Center. I can give you a flyer of what, what we're thinking about. And I said, I know about it. No, thank you. Well, we hope to see you on Thursday night. So they're canvassing the village, soliciting people to come on Thursday night. So are you saying, David, uh, what's the point about executive session? We'll have one or we won't have one or what's I the story? Don't think we have, I'd like to have a little bit of discussion about some concepts mm -hmm. here, but I don't think that that fits in, you know, personnel issues, budget issues. Mm -hmm. uh, um, um, I think, Mr. Chair, I think that's more appropriate uh, with a meeting with our liaison, not during a public meeting right now, uh, right. being that it's personnel issues. Um, well, we're not, we're not I, 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 I don't feel it's appropriate. Yeah, we're uh, with our attorney, executive session with our attorney to get, you know, get legal advice about things. But uh, I think so, too. And I uh you know being the clerk i'm not prepared for this at all so this is kind of new yeah. a new territory okay. for me so i would uh respectfully ask that if um there's anything executive session that you would want to go with the board members that um i first consult with our planning and zoning attorney on the process via zoom so um, when we're on this platform, so well, we'll just um, wait and see what happens. Then. Well, just to, let me let me just test test the question here and see if that's appropriate. I wanted to um, ask, uh, for example, we have uh, the recordings are happening now because we're on Zoom, and uh, and Zoom gets recorded. That's easy. When we went back for three sessions in a row in person, um, I recorded those and edited, you know, put titles on them and made sure that the sound was, was clear when people weren't speaking, but I shouldn't really have to do that. Why? When would we talk about, I guess a question for Lydia, um, having Panda record the planning board meetings, just like they're recording the trustee and mayor meetings. Why? So, Lydia, do you want to jump in about this, or I can share yeah. my two cents? Mm -hmm. Um, go up, go ahead, Brian. So, um, I asked the very same question, Jeff. Rewind back to when the pandemic first started, uh, <laughs> way back in uh, March of last year. March of um, 462 BC. Uh, right, oh, and man. that long, long time ago in the forgotten age. Um, and I did ask, and right now the village of Rhinebeck's contract with Panda is to record one meeting per month. And that is the, the only one in that contract is the mayor and the trustee board meeting. Um, each one. Other than that, we would have to pay Panda each meeting. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we well, would have to pay the person and the staff. And at that time, okay. our budget, it was not budgeted in our department, yeah. in each department. It wasn't allocated uh, to pay the camera person and whatever else um, it comes with, with that. Um, was, so at I that time, it, it wasn't allocated. And we obviously went with Zoom. So yeah. it wasn't further explored um but if albany doesn't act and the governor doesn't act come january of next year i mean obviously it's it's something that should be re revisited because once again we're going to be left sort of at that place of going back to in-person meetings yeah, I, I agree. And, and I guess my question is, when is it appropriate to be revisit? Would it have to happen? I don't know what the budgeting cycle is for the village. So Lydia, it's should... over, right? Yeah, our, our fiscal year is um, June to May. Mm -hmm. So um, if we want to talk about adding Panda twice a month to planning board meetings, you know, we can talk about that in this. The budget cycle is usually in the spring. I mean, it's always in the spring, not usually in the spring. Um, um, but but what what question are we trying to answer? Just well, to be perfectly honest, I, I don't think I, I think it's what I asked before that when the John Fenton issue was settled, um, the planning board should get some of that money back to it for more more hours on the zoning enforcement officer. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm going to yes. ask you to I'm, I'm just going to ask you to stop right now because that is appropriate material for an executive session. Okay. Um. So you know. <laughs> Well, then uh, just, to, would, just to, your, to answer your question, to clarify, I guess my question, what yeah. do we need to do to get the planning board meetings uh, recorded and available on Panda like they are for all of our neighboring uh, municipalities? It's kind of, fr yeah. frankly, it's kind of silly that, that it doesn't happen and, and it not, should happen. So, I, you know. I, I was chairman of the Panda board for several years. We mm -hmm. worked on the contract and the deals for this thing and extra meetings are a hundred dollars. I think that's changed, David. Well, I haven't that's been on changed. the board for a couple of years. What is it now? I've, I don't know, but I know. I don't that. know, but I, I want to say it's 200 plus. If so, I was to take a guess, David, it's 200 plus. I think the issue was that uh, most board meetings are like an hour or two and Gary's board meetings tended to run for longer than that. And there was, a, you know, uh, the uh, cameramen wanted additional pay filming some of the longer media and they tried it. They were working on that when I left the Panda Board. I will find out. I'll talk to Danielle. But it's well, not a lot of money. It's not like it's thousands yeah, of dollars. It's, it's not a lot of money. No, 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 no. Just, I mean, like, just and, a... yeah, and, and we should definitely, I mean, if you want to have an executive session about this, call it right now, David, and we can <laughs> talk about budgeting well. and, and, and staffing issues, which is <laughs> totally appropriate for an executive session. Um, if you'd okay. rather wait until, you know, we actually have some answers on some of the questions that are outstanding, then mm -hmm. we can also wait for that moment. Um, what is the governor's thing? I mean, it's been, it, the reason why I'm recording it for the last year is the, the Zoom, Ryan pushes a button and we have it, you know, we're done for free. I right. believe David, the press release back in June stated January 15th, 2022, the uh, Governor Hochul's, whatever you call it, continuance of the emergency of the open meetings law, use of virtual plat platform expires. I mean, I don't have the exact language in front One of me. The second but... meeting would be January 18th. So we have a couple of months to think about this. Yeah, I, I, I don't I, think we I have to solve it right were... now, but I think yeah. that um, it should be something that's discussed, you know, a part, you know, with the trustee, with the mayor, with however the budgeting goes, because these are public meetings. All of our neighbors do it. It's really kind of silly that we don't have this available to our public, and, and we should. Yeah. Um, so, for example, yeah. we're going to have the uh, the thing that's happening Thursday for the uh, school, the the public comment session, and Panda's mm -hmm. going to be recording that, right? From what it's coming out of yeah. the mayor and the trustees budget. <laughs> yeah, so the, so Panda is going to be recording that because it's a mayor and trustees budget, but we don't have a budget 
Uh, no, I, you know, you, you, you do have a budget. There is a budget for the planning, building, and zoning office. Um, you know, Panda meetings are currently not part of that budget. Okay. But, you know, we can always do mid-year switches and all of the rest of it. So, okay. but um, let's, uh, you know, there's, there's all sorts of questions layered into this conversation. Um, and I, I would be much more comfortable having this conversation inside an executive session. Um, okay. So, you know, if you'd like, we can, David, if you'd like, you can schedule that for the next meeting. You can schedule it for the first meeting in December, I, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, and I'll, I'll make sure to have answers to costs and, you know, how to go okay. about doing this. Um, then so, that's fine. Yeah. I, I think it's a yeah, really basic else. thing that we, we should could be wait doing. Wait another month or so, and then we'll schedule an executive yeah. session to discuss. And just so, just so I know, for this Thursday's meeting, um, which mm -hmm. you mentioned is going to be the planning board and the trustees and the mayor, it's a public comments section. So um, yeah. Um, oh, yep. Go ahead. I was just going to say that if you wanted to make a, you don't have to sit up there with us. Um, I know that there was some discomfort expressed by some of you about that. Um, you also don't have to come. Um, if you are interested in making a comment as a member of the public, I mean, you are all five of you members of the public in addition to your work as the <laughs> no. planning board. I know, no, you're not. Um, I, no, no, no I, I'm not going to make a comment. I'm, no, but um, a fine line. He's walking a fine line. No, no, no. And, and, a fine and, line, but you are allowed to have opinions as a resident of the village. Understood. Yeah. Um, understood. You know, so. I, well, I think that makes sense because I perhaps I misunderstood. I thought that the reason we would be sitting up there together is because we would then go into some uh, workshop. And right. the planning board and the trustees and the mayor would have uh, some collaboration discussion, some work executive workshop. But I, that was... I, I'm trying to figure out the legality of how yeah. to yeah. of how fine. to do that. To be perfectly yeah. honest, okay. um, because well, that... I do, I am trying. I mean, you know, and I don't mind if the public knows this, but like. My goal with this whole question of the Father Brogan Center is, you know, we've heard from the developer, we're going to hear from the public, we're going to keep the public comment mm -hmm. session sort of open. So, I mean, I'm already getting emails. Um, <laughs> I, I plan on continuing to get emails after Thursday. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I would like to have a working session with probably two members of the planning board, two members of the zoning board, myself, someone maybe gary maybe someone else on the on the board of trustees who's interested mm -hmm. and and start to hammer out some of these issues because um you know brogan is not the only building in a residential district that is you know big <laughs> for lack of a better way to describe it um you know, we have exit like the Montgomery, not Montgomery, the Thompson house, you know, has 12 apartments in it. Um, and it's in the residential district. It's grandfathered in, you know, so it's like, there's a lot of, this is not the only example of what we're dealing with. It's just the first one that we've had to deal with under the current zoning code. Um, and, you know, I'm very curious as to how we can be thoughtful and creative about how to resolve this problem, resolve whatever the problem is. Um, <laughs> Because okay, right. so we'll, and, you know, we'll, and, hear, and, we'll hear from you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you'll hear from me. Right. But we're not going to, it's not going to be, we're all sitting together. And then after the meeting, we go into an executive session and have. So, so like you say, okay. there's really no so need for us to be up. sitting there. In fact, we can just watch the Panda recording totally. if we, if yeah. we want to. Uh, uh, yeah. See. If you don't, if you don't want to come at all. Okay. Yeah. But to have a discussion with the board, it's going to have to be like Noah's off two by two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two by two, we can't go. Um, All right, more than that, right. becomes pub, you know, three people of a board is now yeah. requires a public hearing. Yeah, yeah. and then it okay. stops being a working session. Right. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that. I just yeah, I, I I'm I'm willing to continue if I have to recording the in person planning board sessions because I think it's important to have them available, but I wouldn't want to do that for long. I, I just wanted to say that. No, I, I, I appreciate that. And I do think that one of the reasons why she made it expire on January 15th is I, I know that the I know that Albany is actually working on the open meetings law in general. Um, and the fact that, you know, open 
the last time the Open Meetings Law was amended was in 2001 or 2002 before this technology was even invented. So, you know, I know that they're thinking about it up there. Um, and, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe they're hoping to have a resolution by January 15th. This is um, Zoom. I mean, it's great to be in person, but Zoom is so, we have public hearings on Zoom. Mm -hmm. People make I don't like Zoom. Zoom. We get it recorded. We say, wait a second, let's see what it looks like. Somebody goes to Google Earth and brings up a picture <laughs> of what the building looks like. It's so, you know, it's very, we've gotten so good at this. It's it's smooth and more, uh, maybe that's yeah. like, you know, Ryan, go and you run into your office and look for that plan that we that we uh, did a couple of years ago and see what it says. It's, uh, but I, I mean, as you know, the, the village trustees don't like Zoom either, which is why we're still in person. So, um, you know, it, it it's, there are advantages to Zoom. There are also disadvantages to people who don't have, you know, are, who are not computer savvy. Um, so, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages to all of this. Um, and then it also so, leads to the bigger discussion of a hybrid platform. Oy. And Oy. Bringing, Oy. bringing Village Hall to a more 21st century technology. I mean, the newest thing in there is a flat screen television and even mm -hmm. flat screen TVs are considered ancient. So, mm -hmm. um, well, when that discussion comes up, I can tell you what we've been doing at the Bard College oh, Lifetime right. Learning Institute um, to do hybrid training and even using the five thousand dollar Bard classroom hybrid technology. It's been a real challenge, but we can I'll be happy to talk to you about our experience there if anybody wants to offline. And Jeff and I are very close to making it sort of work at Village Hall for historical society programs, but it's still a one way, you can only chat back. You can't have the person mm -hmm. appear on the screen like they are now mm -hmm. and make comments. They can just yeah. chat back. Getting them to talk to you is something that requires a lot of money. Uh, well, and a lot of time and management. I did one on uh, Saturday night with the Red Hook Kiwanis Club um, Best Citizen Awards, where we had 29 people on Zoom and about 12 or 15 people at the hall in Red Hook. And we pulled it off, but it took a lot of work. Mike Frazier's done, done some rotary meetings, Mike, like, mm -hmm. that struggling with. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're looking, I mean, the village, we're, we're part of what we'd like to use the American Rescue Act's money for is some work on Village Hall, um, primarily the HVAC system to make the um, circulation better and cleaner, um, the air cleaner. But, you know, there are, there are lots of ways that we could make that big meeting room up there more technologically adept at managing meetings like this. Um, but, you know, that is all to be seen. Um, so that is all to be seen. All right, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn, Jeff. We have a second. I'll make a second. All those in favor, we don't need to do a roll call vote. Aye. 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 All right, we'll see you in two weeks.